Hello viewers, welcome to another panel discussion in our series Beat Diabetes. We know that diabetes is increasing exponentially in India and has assumed alarming proportions. We also know that heart disease is common in India and both diabetes and heart disease seem to occur in the younger population. To understand the connection between these two common disorders, diabetes and the heart, and to figure out what to do for it, what to do to prevent it, we have a galaxy of experts for you. To my left first is Dr. Praveen Chandra, who's the chairman of interventional cardiology at Medanta, the Medicity. Dr. Chandra, welcome. Next to him, we have one of most respected endocrinologists in India and chair of the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Department of Endocrinology and Diabetes, is Dr. Nikhil Tandon. We have Dr. Sanjay Kalra from Karnal, who's been the backbone of research and publishing in this area in India for the last few years. And then we have Dr. Sujoy Ghosh from Calcutta, who is a professor at the PGI in Calcutta. Welcome all of you, and we'll start our discussion on diabetes and the heart. Let's first start with Dr. Praveen Chandra. And you know, uh, we all talk about diabetes and heart. And so first, let's understand, is heart disease really common in India? And what are the numbers? What are the figures about that? Yeah, so Dr. Ambrish, I think this is a very important thing to understand that uh, heart disease and diabetes are so interrelated that if I look at my patients in the ICU and in the wards, almost 42% or maybe up to half of these patients who are having heart disease are having diabetes at the background. So that connection is very, very common. And also, those patients who are undergoing angiography, angioplasty, almost 40% of these patients are already having a diabetes at the background for maybe two years, five years, or 10 years. So those are, those are bad figures, but in general, are Indians more prone to getting heart disease and you know, yes. is, there, is the profile different? Yes, Indians are much more exposed to having a heart disease and basically if you compare with the Western population, our data is much more alarming and the prevalence at this time is about 8 to 10 percent in the urban population and I think 2 to 3 percent in the rural population. So those are not very good figures. I mean, they're, they're telling us that, uh, you know, diabetes is very common in India. Some staggering figures of people at 60 in metros, maybe 40 percent have diabetes. And then we have this heart disease story. So Dr. Tandon, you have great experience in this area. So what do you think is the connect? I mean, are diabetics really more prone to heart disease? I mean, what happens? Unfortunately, yes. I mean, uh, people with diabetes seem to have maybe something like two to four times as much a risk of developing heart disease, which is uh, compared to people who do not have diabetes. And, and, and there are data which therefore seem to indicate that uh, we should look to diabetes as if it's an equivalent of underlying heart disease. And, and the data therefore showed that somebody who has diabetes has the same risk of getting a heart attack as even if they're not known to have disease as somebody who's not diabetic and who's had a previous heart attack. That means somebody with an established heart disease without diabetes and somebody with diabetes without established heart disease have equivalent risks and therefore they've got to be looked at in that fashion. And that's a critical message that there is, if you see a person with diabetes, treat them and manage them as if they have undiagnosed underlying heart disease to ensure good health for them. So I think the message is coming across very clearly. It's a, it's, a, it's a strong link. And we need to intervene early, intervene at the diabetes stage rather than wait for the heart stage. And probably as we'll go along, we'll discuss how good intervention can really help us prevent from getting there. So uh, Dr. Kalra, uh, what are your thoughts about, you know, why is this link? Does the blood glucose have an impact on, on, on heart disease per se? Yes, blood glucose does affect the heart. 
it affects the arteries of the heart, which are known as coronary arteries. And this coronary artery disease manifests as angina, unstable angina, or heart attacks. Apart from that, diabetes also affects the muscles of the heart. And people with diabetes have relatively weaker muscles. And this can lead to heart failure. So these are two different ways in which diabetes affects the heart. The higher the glucose values, or the higher the sugar values, the more the chances of heart attack, and the more the chances of heart failure. But the good side of the coin is that the lower the glucose values, the lesser the chances of heart attack and the lesser the chances of heart failure. So we can actually focus on lowering glucose values and find improvements in heart health. Really, there's this whole thing about pre-diabetes. You know, we're talking of large numbers of diabetics, but we're also talking of even larger number of pre-diabetics who are, let's say, between 101 or 100 to 140 uh, fasting blood glucose or below 200 postprandial glucose. So this zone, which is not really diabetic, should they also be concerned about their heart health? Technically speaking, we tend to divide the entire population into individuals who have normal blood glucose on one side and the others who have diabetes. And like you've categorically mentioned, that this is a group of individuals who follow or fall in between. But what we've got to remember is, you know, these cutoffs that we tend to use is often arbitrary and the risk is in continuum. And even individuals with pre-diabetes, therefore, are more likely to have risk of heart problems, perhaps not as high as those who have diabetes, but the risk does start even at the level of pre-diabetes. And the good thing, like Dr. Kalra was suggesting, that even if we manage pre-diabetes properly, then we would probably be able to prevent not only diabetes, but also the heart complications that might be associated with pre-diabetes. So I think that's, that's very important information, saying that pre-diabetes, when you're just getting there, is a huge window of opportunity. So if you test your glucose and find it's, as they say, borderline or in the pre-diabetic zone, that's the time to intervene, not only to prevent diabetes from developing, but also to prevent your heart from getting affected and rest, maintaining good heart health. Dr. Chandra, you have a lot of experience with handling these kind of patients. So, you know, patients with diabetes who get into heart problems. So how is it to deal with them? Are they different than your non-diabetes population? So basically, the diabetic patients have much more aggressive disease occurring at an earlier age compared to non-diabetic individuals. So basically, those patients who are diabetics must look out for, for having any hidden heart disease because if they develop it, the chance of having a big heart attack or chance of having a muscle weakness as was mentioned earlier is much higher. So that is why we have to be aggressive in checking these patients and also treating these patients, bringing them to the hospital much earlier than the non-diabetic people. So it's important that not only do diabetics have, may have silent heart disease, they may also be more prone uh, to more aggressive forms of heart disease. But as I said, the message that's coming across is that right from the beginning, you got to take care of your diabetes. If you take care of your diabetes and associated conditions properly, you would probably not head down that path at all. Well, uh, Dr. Tandon, you know, we've talked about blood glucose affecting the heart, but we do realize that it's not just blood glucose that does it alone. So what are the other risk factors? Who's at risk for getting heart disease amongst our diabetes patients? So before I answer, I'll just sort of take the opportunity to add one sentence yes, to what sir. Dr. Chandra said, is that we're looking at a whole spectrum of chronic non-communicable disease. I think we should use every opportunity when some individual comes to a treating physician to look for risk factor. So if a person comes to a cardiologist with features indicative of heart disease, that's an opportunity sure. for the cardiologist Absolutely. to advise that their glucose is also tested. So opportunistic screening would be a very, very important way of finding disease at an earlier stage besides the recommended uh, periodic Absolutely. screening, which sometimes people tend not to follow. Coming back to your question, I think, I, I think it's very important to understand that yes, glucose lowering is critical. We cannot ignore it because in the, in the whole context of diabetes management, the complications of the eye, the kidney are all very strongly affected by reducing glucose. But for heart disease, I think there are three or four other parameters which require similar intervention. One, blood pressure. People with diabetes are much more likely to have high blood pressure. And therefore, again, if some patient comes to you with diabetes, it's in incumbent on the doctor to measure their blood pressure and treat it. Again, they're much more likely to have bad 
cholesterol. So higher LDL cholesterol, lower HDL cholesterol, which is a good cholesterol, and again, higher triglycerides. And then this constellation of what we call diabetic dyslipidemia, uh, you know, a constellation of bad fats in our blood, again contributes. The third thing which possibly is common to both diabetes and heart disease is a tendency of people who are overweight to have both diabetes and heart disease. And again, one of the contributing factors to that could be uh, disinterest in physical activity, if I can use that term. <laughs> and so these become four critical issues which need intervention. A fifth one, whether you're diabetic or you're not diabetic, is tobacco. Well, we, we, end, we end up using the word smoking very often and, and ignore that there are other ways of consuming tobacco. So tobacco cessation, if somebody has, uh, would be critical. All of these five issues which I've listed are remediable. And therefore, while it's bad news that they are enhancing the likelihood of, diabetes, uh, of, of heart disease and people with diabetes, the good stuff is that each one of them can be managed and managed to an effect that it can reduce the likelihood of, of future heart disease. At this point, we'll take a short break and we'll be back again with much more information. Stay tuned. Healthcare partner. Welcome back. And we now move to Dr. Kalra and let's talk about women and, and heart disease. So women with diabetes and their risk for heart disease. Is there some connect there? Uh, yes, there is a very significant difference. Healthy women who do not have diabetes are protected from heart disease by the virtue of their hormones the estrogens which remain in uh, circulation until menopause. But diabetic women lose this protection and so therefore they are at much higher risk of developing heart disease. Another issue is that after the first uh, heart attack, women with diabetes tend to die earlier than men with diabetes. So the outcomes are much poorer. And globally across the world, we see that women tend to receive much less interventional therapy. So less women relatively will reach the ICCU maybe for an angioplasty or for a bypass surgery. So a very important point being made mm. here that it is traditionally s somewhat thought that you know women are protected from heart disease but diabetes sort of peels off this protection and it's important that women with diabetes are also screened in the same way as men because they tend sometimes to have even worse outcomes than men. So I think it's a very very important message. Thank you Dr. Kalra. And we now move to, to Dr. Ghosh again and, and you know you talked about testing for diabetes. What about testing for the heart in people who have diabetes. Should everyone be undergoing like coronary angiograms? What, how should we test people with diabetes so that we can protect them from developing heart disease? Symptoms of heart disease in patients with diabetes might be absent. So even if somebody does not have symptoms of heart disease with diabetes, we should be aware that at least one third of them will have underlying heart disease. So therefore it's important to be aware of the possibility of heart disease even if the individual does not have any symptoms. Now most of the strategies that are used to tackle or manage diabetes related heart problems is risk factor intervention like Professor Tan mentioned and therefore all individuals whether they have symptoms or not they should be screened for their risk factors. That's the hypertension, the dyslipidemia, whether they take tobacco or not, whether they are obese or not. So all of that has to be done. In addition to that, whether we are going to go for fancy tests, whether it's the stress test or the coronary angiograms or coronary calcium scores, this would have to be made on an individual basis. An individual risk stratification will have to be done by the doctors in discussion with the patient trying to ask for subtle symptoms if there are any because the symptoms might be quite varied and it has to be done on an individual basis rather than a blanket screening test of an angiogram for everyone. So, so I think that's, that's really good advice 
Look after your heart health. Do all the things that are being advised. Don't rush for tests unless your doctor specifically advises you to. We now move to Dr. Tandon and again, and you know, we are now looking at what can we actually do hands-on to protect ourselves uh, from developing heart disease, those of us who have diabetes. So I, I think the important thing for us to understand here is that uh, for an individual patient, sometimes it becomes very confusing because, you know, somebody has told him that this diet is good for A disease, the other diet is good for B disease, the third diet is good for C, but this is one human being, right? They can only do so much. I think a prudent diet, which ensures that one doesn't put on weight or loses weight if they are overweight, not too much intake of fats, controlling the amount of refined carbohydrates, getting a good amount of fiber into the system, and regular aerobic physical exercise, which is permissible to them by their physician, so that you know if they have a problem which precludes their doing exercise, they should not be doing it. So that is a central theme. Amongst medication, good use of blood pressure lowering medication, so that their blood pressure keeps under check, and keeping LDL cholesterol, which is a bad cholesterol in the normal range, with a group of drugs called statins, for which there's enough information that whether you have diabetes or you don't have diabetes, use of statins for LDL lowering impacts significantly on reducing heart risk. I think that's the key sort of message which one should would have. I think the, the important message from that is really that follow lifestyle but also don't discontinue drugs that are advised by a doctor. Please make mm -hmm. sure that if you have any doubt, any question about that particular uh, medication, check with your doctor, don't just go off it because there are no symptoms that you can relate it to. Uh, Dr. Kalra, what about treatments for diabetes? I mean diabetes itself, do they also impact the heart in any way? Uh, yes, they do and the good news is that they impact the heart beneficially. So over the past two decades, many modern drugs have been developed for the management of diabetes. Mm -hmm. And by and large, these are all safe for the heart. So over and above the glucose lowering effect that we achieve with these injections and with these tablets, we are able to achieve a benefit in heart health. We are able to reduce. So, so that's good news. More and more yeah. good news. So yes, we can do stuff with our lifestyle. We can reduce our risk factors. And maybe some of the newer drugs can even help even anti-diabetic yeah. drugs can, can actually help, help in, 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 in reducing our risk for uh, heart, heart episodes. Disease, yeah. Yeah. So uh, quickly, Dr. Ghosh, we're running out of time. Quickly, uh, what are the symptoms that a patient with diabetes should look for? Uh, why, when should they suspect that they have a heart problem? Right. I think uh, during my previous question, I tried to address that a lot of people with underlying heart disease might not have symptoms at all. So it's again important to remember that. And the symptoms might be subtle, might be nonspecific, things like heartburns, chest discomfort, jaw pain, shortness of breath, a little bit of swelling in the feet, all of that might be indicators that you might be having heart disease in an individual with diabetes. So, so atypical symptoms need to watch out for that. And supposing someone is getting chest pain, Dr. Chandra, and you are the expert in this, you know, you start feeling that you're getting a heart attack or a heart problem. What should one do immediately? Okay, so basically this is a you know moment of emergency, I must yes. say, and people have to act extremely fast because the most important thing which we have understood up till now in treatment of heart attack is the time because the treatment of heart attack should happen in the first one to one and a half hours and that is what we call as golden hour. In this golden hour, the patient, once he is recognized that he is, going to, he is developing a heart attack, he should be made to lie down he should not be walking. Uh, aspirin tablet, if it is available in the house, should be crushed and be given in a glass of water. And if sorbitrate tablet is available, it can be put under the tongue. And then one should know, or the family should know, which is the nearest facility, nearest facility where a cardiac treatment can be provided. And the best treatment in a heart attack situation is giving an injection, which actually dissolves the clot inside the arteries, yeah. or sometimes we now do angioplasty. If it is available, it should be done, and all this should be done in the first one to 60 minutes to 90 so minutes. that's really important, critical information, and we have to end now with last word by Dr. Nikhil Tandon on what do you think is the overall socioeconomic impact of all these conditions? These are chronic non-communicable diseases. The first thing is unlike an episode of an infection, you know, the, the impact on the patient's Social economic status is much less in an infective disorder because it's a finite. This is lifelong treatment. 
there is significant socioeconomic impact on people with diabetes, which gets exacerbated and magnified significantly if they have coexistent heart disease because they'll require more hospitalizations, perhaps more interventions, maybe even surgeries. And, and it's been estimated that the, the productivity loss is in people with diabetes is about 2% of GDP equivalent. And it becomes important for us, and I think this point has been raised by all the panelists, that since people in India seem to get diabetes early, and those with diabetes seem to get heart disease early and more aggressive variants of heart disease, the impact is quite significant. So the message, instead of getting jotted down in numbers, would be try and prevent diabetes and try and prevent heart disease if you have diabetes because, and that is feasible. And that Absolutely. is clearly feasible and that should be our aim rather than worrying about uh, the productivity issues. So, so I think uh, the key messages that emerge from this discussion is we know diabetes is common, we know diabetes patients get more heart disease, we also know that prevention, prevention, prevention is the answer, prevention of diabetes, prevention of, of, of heart disease, but we also know that in case you do reach that, that block of actually having heart problems, the, with good technology, modern treatment, most people with diabetes will have excellent outcomes. So there's no need to despair throughout this, this span of diabetes. You can protect your heart and good luck with that. Your reliable healthcare partner.